If you're joining me today, I thank you for coming along this, this journey. It's, uh, it's crawled across raid, and this is the final round. Just a quick look at the leaderboard, seeing as it's been about a month. I don't know if anybody remembers the standings. We're going to go into round six. This is the raid. And here are the rules for the final round. It's pretty basic stuff. Gate touches or checkpoint touches are okay. But if you miss a checkpoint like this, you don't follow the arrow, you get reset to the previous checkpoint. The only physical contact with the vehicle is within is when there's been a rollover or the vehicle gets stuck. No free passes. So reversing is allowed, clipping is okay. Fouling a checkpoint is a reset and rolling over is a reset. Simple enough? I think so. So first out on the course, first is generally not the best position to be in, uh, will be Jolly Green as he is points leader after the first five rounds. I laid these gates out and basically didn't test any of it. I just I laid him out the day before. I brought this guy out the following morning. Nice brisk morning, unusual for our area, and went after it. I uh, I don't have enough gate markers to do this, so we're doing a single gate kind of slalom style. The gates have arrows on them, and the, the rule is you have to pass on the side that the arrow indicates. So, theoretically, you could pass as wide as you'd like to the side the arrow indicates, but the way a lot of this course is laid out is there's not, there's not that much room. So, things uh, get kept pretty tight. Um, no spoilers, but there are well, uh, let's just put it this way. Uh, Jolly Green just passed checkpoint eight. And uh, including the finish point, uh, there are 90 checkpoints on this course. Uh, some are laid out better than others. This one, I didn't realize. I essentially had gates 10 and 11 pointing at each other, so it's uh, just a really wide, like a three foot wide gate. If I'd flipped their arrows, that would have been a lot more challenging, but I I was already there, so if Jolly Grain gets the freebie, everybody gets the freebie. See, I, I can say here early on where it, I think that gate at the top is gate 14? I believe this one's kind of hard to see behind the weeds. I think that's gate 16. Uh, I think Jolly Green might have made a tactical error entering this round. Uh, he is running his battery in the forward position. And much of this layout is kind of side hill oriented. There's not... There's not a huge amount of it that relies on pure verticality. So, time will tell if that choice was a poor one, because the battery in that forward position definitely affects steering radius. Now, it does help in situations like that, the sort of partial side hill, but Jolly Green was having to make a lot of U-turns 
to navigate some of the, the, the tighter sections. And overall, I mean, of all the rigs here, he has the most powerful steering servo. And at no point during this round did it feel that way. Like, he felt nose-heavy the whole way. And I think that's sort of apparent in, in some situations here. Uh, his transitioning, particularly descending, like right here, nose weight is great. He took a bad line, like I say, first on the course, not necessarily the best. But once he's up and over, great, but it it's a lot of front weight. And this is a particularly heavy truck, so now I'm questioning. He still has the, the standard LCG battery mount because he was pushing a lot uh, this section right here I think this is gate 42 32 I I couldn't even count uh, he passes the the raw ascent spots with relative ease but tight Navigation is not his forte. This is coming up on a sharp left-hander. And, like, just pushing so much. He lost a lot of time having to constantly reposition. Now, in sections like this, it did great. But I just think I didn't, well, I mean, I guess it's fair. I didn't lay the course out with any sort of rig in mind. I threw markers down and numbered them this time so I could at least remember where I was going. That was gate 32 at the steep section. I remember this one. That's gate 40, that he's, or checkpoint 40 that he's getting stuck right next to. Gonna head across the bridge. The first section was more up here, across the bridge, and then it'll take the upper highway. That's kind of the end of the trailing portion. There's a little bit of trailing in the middle, connecting segments together. But once he drops down into the the gully here, the the heart of the Leviathan, I think we're going with calling it. As he passes checkpoint 43. This is where it gets a lot more technical. Uh, particularly right here. His poor... Whatever... For whatever reason, his poor turning radius on the day really hurts in sections like this. Though, in hindsight... He could have just turned out much wider and then tucked back in to clear that gate. But I guess force of habit just had me hammer at it. I, I, I enjoy this section right here. It's very technical, the way it's V-notched at the bottom. And it gets a lot of side load on the tires, so it wants to flip things over. But there's something really rewarding about finding that that right line to balance. So he's going to make a nice slow progression here up out of the gully and down onto the teeter, down onto the side hill, which is... This is tough terrain for, for most everyone. I just added another layer of fill... To, to solidify it up. As you can see, rocks down on the ground still getting ejected out during runs. But it's packing in a lot better. And the more dirt on it, the more difficult it makes it. Because there's 
there's no traction to be found on those on those dirt patches so it's going from high grip to no grip now right here particularly front battery really helped he he took that section like like it was nothing there's a little bit more of trail stuff here going into the very unkempt low hanging pepper so little little video gap here just showing uh, entry and exit because as you can see they just get stuck he had a real rough time right here uh, that front weight I could I could feel it go as soon as that because he's coming off at an angle trying to fit in between that slab and that checkpoint uh, he would just fall like one wheel got into the air and just pulled the whole rig down behind it and finally here on oblivion a little bit of a chance to use that front weight to its best benefit uh, I think he did pretty well here little bump to try to get over the top uh, one of the slabs has slid off the top and is now kind of in that top channel. I just leave it in there because it, it's kind of annoying and I have to remember that it's there. Another little free section across the dirt. Barely using any of uh, the waterfall because at this point I was already running out of markers. I think... I think I might have had maybe half a dozen uh, tennis ball halves remaining. Uh, the, the gate numbers have to be in the 50s by this point. I can't recall. Maybe I can see if the camera angle changes. Oh, there's a reset back to the gate before, which is unfortunate because as this course layout goes on and the bucket of checkpoints gets smaller and smaller the checkpoints are getting further and further away they're getting farther apart so any mistake uh, can be potentially very costly coming up over the top of drybone valley we get to our first uh, installment of what I'd like to call the minimum level of jank. We're using a irrigation flag as a marker. That flag was, I think, checkpoint 63. I think that yellow marker is 64. 64? 63 or 64? Because I think the one down here at the bottom is 65. I mean, numbering them helped a little. Got a little problem here. A lot of nose weight, but he, he writes it. Yeah, that's 65 right there, because it's 66 at the, at the basin of Slick Rock here. Which he did pretty well. Uh, I think I watered it down a few days before I got most of the superficial dust off, so... He cleared that pretty easy. I think at this point, I think I'm completely out of tennis ball halves. There's a marker invisible wedged in between the rocks. Uh, you can see a little fleck of the yellow there. Down at the bottom of Precious Stones. Uh, the, the roundabout checkpoint at number 69, knocking some rocks off. Uh, he's going to pass up under the Buddha here for checkpoint 70. Uh, 71 is up here at the top of the side hill, which I realized right here as he tried to go around the knob and overcorrected and fell off and hit the camera. Uh, with no checkpoint down lower, you don't have to go down around the bottom of it. So he lost a significant amount of time there. 
Uh, his body is particularly well suited to wedging in between those branches. So he took that very easily. Uh, this section is all uh, newly repaired. It was eroding away pretty badly. And uh, I planted a juniper there. He's just passing the new juniper. Coming up on what I think is gate 75? That might be 75. The, the, running over the other one is fine. That uh, that soccer cone is for when the course loops back over itself. Uh, once again, hindsight came into play uh, after I had laid it out and was this far into the run. I realized I could have laid it out to where it didn't cross over itself. But but here we are. So he's got a clear gate 78 which is right there at the top of the flagstones. And gate 78 was a problem for old Jolly Green because gate 77 is that irrigation flag. And 78 is in a spot where with his compromised steering, it was very difficult to just get past it. Like a, a gate graze is fine as long as I don't upset it and knock it out of the ground. And he finally went to capitalizing on reversing being okay. He's just going to reverse from gate 78 to 79 and head on up the beast. I think the problem arose in where I wanted this cutback. I wanted it to round to go around the top of the beast and come back down. And, well, basically, Jolly Green did a lot better, I would say, up to, like, into the 50s. So on the newer portions of the course. And after that, things really went off the rails. I tried to make the last seven or eight gates or so reasonably easy well, now I'm wondering if I passed gate 83 on the correct side I can definitely see the arrow on 84 yeah I understand now why uh, like competition courses are what like 10 gates because 85 is likewise almost impossible but with it being a one-sided slalom style gate, uh, Jelly Green realized he could just go wide around the sleeping giant himself and come down on the correct side of the arrow. There's nothing saying how close he needs to pass to that arrow. Now it's just a straight shot up the high road, which of all the obstacles here, uh, has, I think, broken more parts than, uh, than anything else. Uh, this, this particular obstacle has snapped drive shafts, has uh, stripped out servo horns, uh, broke the panhard mount clean off of Colonel Mustard, the SCX-10-3. But uh, if, you, if you're smart about the line you take, it's not too bad. This was just punishing if I had put that marker another four inches to the left. And see, that's, that's fine. A graze is fine. At this point, uh, Jolly Green is just tired. Uh, passing, what is I think, gate 88. Gate 89 at the entry to the tunnel. And then he's going to, as they would say, cross the line. Checkpoint 90. So Jolly Green's day finishes with a time of 18 minutes and 9.57 seconds. We have no idea where that places him on the final board. As the course I've laid out is absolutely ludicrous, 
and uh, takes 18 minutes to run it and almost 90 minutes to film it so uh, this is going to be broken up everybody's going to get their own episode for their final appearance in the crawler cross season and uh, I will find out how they fare at the same time as you and uh, I hope everybody comes back to see the rest of the competitors perform and uh I'll, I'll stay at it. So, uh, thanks for sticking with me. And, uh, I hope to see you in the next one.